Scientists just created a wireless brain implant that can use light to send signals directly into the neurons themselves. No wires, no battery, no external hardware, just a soft patch of electronics sitting on top of the skull, blending in like a second skin. The physics behind how this works is jaw-dropping. Because once you understand it, you start to see why this breakthrough could transform medicine. But we'll also discuss why it could be dangerous. Let's dive in. I'm Ben. This is Physics or Bust. This breakthrough comes from Northwestern University a soft, stretchable, submillimeter implant loaded with micro-LEDs. When it's activated, it sends light pulses that force neurons to fire on command. And the brain responds to these artificial signals as if they're completely natural. The team uses light instead of electric current because electric current spreads. It diffuses through biological tissue. But photons don't behave the same way. They follow optical scattering rules. There's a big difference in spatial precision that comes from the fact that electric fields follow conductivity gradients, while light follow refractive index gradients. And neural tissue is heterogeneous, filled with membranes, organelles, and protein. In physics terms, the resolution for electricity is limited by Poisson conductivity, but light's resolution is only limited by Rayleigh and my scattering. And those scattering lengths are tiny. And that's good, because that means that we can get pinpoint accuracy down to a few microns. We'll dig into the physics in a minute, but first, if you like this video, you'd probably like this book. I've got a link in the description below. I do get a small commission, but it wouldn't cost you any extra. To understand why light can control neurons, you need optogenetics, one of the most fascinating intersections between physics and biology ever developed. Regular neurons naturally fire when voltage-gated channels open. Optogenetics replaces or supplements those with light-gated channels. So a photon hits the protein, the protein undergoes a conformational change, ions flow, making the membrane potential spike, causing the neuron to fire. This is quantum physics at work. A single photon causing the electronic structure of a molecule to change, making the neuron react. Now these photons are coming from micro-LEDs, and these micro-LEDs are tiny only about 20 microns wide. And their power needs are tiny too, on the range of only microwatts. That's important because it means that they have extremely high internal quantum efficiency, meaning that almost every electron that's injected into the LED produces a photon. Older LEDs lost half or more of that energy to heat. A high photon to watt ratio is the only reason that you can operate these things with wireless power and still get enough brightness to trigger the neuron. This is a material science triumph. Gallium nitride semiconductors getting better every year. The implant has no battery. It's powered by a near-field inductive coupling. The same physics behind your wireless charging pad, but miniaturized. Here's the physics. You pass alternating current through a coil outside the body. This creates a time-varying magnetic field. That field passes through a tiny coil inside the implant. By Faraday's law, the changing magnetic flux induces an electromotive force. Normally, you need a big coil to get enough flux. But this implant uses high permeability magnetic materials and microfabricated spiral coils that maximize magnetic coupling even at millimeter distances. This is amazing material science engineering done inside soft, biocompatible electronics. The implant's microcontroller is tiny but does something very clever. It can encode patterns of light because it uses an array of 64 micro LEDs instead of just using one. Neurons interpret these patterns the way they would interpret natural input. Frequency indicates the intensity of sensation. Spatial pattern indicates location. Pulse train timing indicates texture or rhythm. Multi-channel bursts indicate something moving or changing. You're not just firing a neuron, you're writing sensory information. One question people raise is, but the brain is opaque. How does the light get to the neurons? The fact is the brain's not fully opaque. It's highly scattering, but scattering isn't absorption. A photon might bounce 20 times, but as long as it stays within the absorption length, it still hits those light sensitive channels. A small amount of scattering like this actually helps spread the stimulus across useful neural volumes. You could give someone the sensation of touching, even if no contact actually happened. 
The physics is the same as natural sensory transduction, but the input is photons instead of pressure receptors. Right now, prosthetics can read muscle activity, but they almost never write sensation back to the user. With this optical implant, you can encode texture, pressure, temperature, all using pulse patterns. This is a communication channel directly into the somatosensory cortex. Imagine a spinal cord injury that blocks nerve signals. Instead of trying to patch the injury so that the signal can go to the brain, you could generate that signal locally in the brain. In visual prosthetics, electrode resolution hits a wall because electricity spreads. But photons don't spread as much. So a micro-LED array could generate high-resolution pixels of light directly into the visual cortex. This could mean artificial sight with far more detail than today's electrode implants. And if you can encode sensory information, you can encode higher level information too. Emotions, urges, even memory formation rely on neural firing patterns. We aren't there yet, but the physics doesn't forbid it. Now everything I've described is incredible science, but there is a dark side to this. If you can generate emotions, urges, and memory formation, that also means that you'd be able to f generate fake emotions, fake urges, and fake memory formation. Even fake warnings and fake intuitions. And the brain would accept it all as truth. Even if this specific device is secure, future versions might not be. I mean, let's be honest. Every wireless technology eventually gets hacked. If a mouse can be trained through artificial cues, so can a human. It might not technically be mind control, but it's a really thin line. This technology could eventually help millions. It can restore senses and sensations, rebuild circuits, and even unlock new abilities. But breakthroughs like this always have some risks associated with them, and we have to keep an eye on them. For more updates on space and science, remember to like and subscribe. And remember, keep asking questions. I'll see you on the next video.